Here we go. Wow, hi girl. Wow, look at that. It's time. We're back at the vet with Chief Brody, the alligator snapping turtle. And uh, if you guys aren't caught up, click the link above me to watch the first video we did on him. But we are here to see if he has put on any weight. Fingers crossed that he has. And we're also going to do a recheck on his blood. because he feels heavier, so hopefully he actually is. Uh, if you guys take note of his shell, it looks lighter. That's because I've been working a little bit here and there without stressing him out too much to get the algae off him. I can't stand looking at it anymore. And he really is a beautifully golden turtle underneath. So we'll see. Two point two pounds? There's 24 cakes, that's, that's cakes. Oh, so he's up? He's up. He is up. He up like two and a half, almost two and a half pounds. No way. Yeah. Okay, so my stress level with Chief Brody might be starting to go down a little bit. He put on two pounds. That's awesome. Two solid pounds. And while he's not out of the woods yet, I feel good about it. Uh, I love this turtle with all my heart and um, we're fighting for him. We really, really are. So he's seemingly improving. And uh, hopefully it's just all arrows pointing up from here. But we got something else we gotta do now. Okay, I'm really excited. As you guys may know by now, it's not just turtles and tortoises here at Garden State Tortoise. We keep all reptiles and some amphibians. And well, um, the animals that just came to us right now are something I have been super excited about for a long time. Our good friend, Kevin McCurley of New England Reptile Distributors just sent us two very intelligent, very powerful animals. And uh, I need to get them out of the box. And I'm also gonna use welding gloves just to be safe. This is how you ship reptiles. Styrofoam lined box, all the appropriate tags and stickers. They are IATA regulated boxes and shipping containers so that the animals travel safely and quickly. Here we go. Oh, we got zip ties. I need something to cut real quick. <laughs> wow, hi girl. Wow, look at that. This is the Argus Monitor. Native to the Papuan Island, New Guinea, and Indonesia. This is the female. She is fully grown. This is one of the smaller monitors, not really small like our Aki monitors, which are the dwarf spiny tails from Australia, but they are by no means massive like a water monitor or a Komodo dragon. Nonetheless, very intelligent, powerful animals capable of not only inflicting a very serious bite, but um, their nails are insanely sharp and they can tail whip. So, although Kevin said I probably didn't need the welding gloves because these animals are very used to people and rather tame, um, I'm doing this to respect them. I am respecting the fact that if they want to, they can really hurt me and they're in an unfamiliar place right now. So she is stressed out, naturally. She's been living in the same place for a long time and now she's gonna live here. And you hear that sound she's making? She's puffing out, but gotta assess her health. We gotta make sure that she traveled well and that she is okay. But that's what she's doing to just try to intimidate me. Just look at the intelligence in those eyes. She's just, she's studying me like I'm studying her. <laughs> All right, let me get her settled and then we're gonna pull the other one out. Hope 
hopefully this one is pretty chill because this is the male. And males, of course, get bigger. Just a little bigger. <laughs> All right, buddy. Let's be friends. Big lizard. His claws are coming up here. There we go. All right, here we go. Let's get you some daylight. There he is. Hey, bud. That right there is a powerful lizard. This is the male Argus monitor that Kevin sent us. He is every bit of awesome. Look at his forearms. Now, something you guys should know about Argus monitors right away is they do something that we call tripoding, where they will actually use the tail and their back legs and they will stand straight up almost like a begging dog and they use that to survey the land really take in what's going on around them another sign of that intelligence and the capabilities that these animals have up here don't underestimate a monitor lizard whether it's a giant one a medium one like this or even a little aki these animals are just plain smart they're problem solvers they're thinkers they're doers so you look fantastic I'm sure you have had it. Came uh, pretty long ways. So what we got to do now is we got to get these guys set up into appropriate enclosures, leave them be for a while, let them settle in and calm down, start getting them fed. And uh, we might even have eggs a little bit sooner than uh, we were planning, but hey, that's great, right? So cool. I, I thank you, Kevin. These are absolutely incredible. And, uh, I can't wait to share more about these guys with, with all of you out there. And hey, we gotta name them. So like we do in other videos, think of a name and leave it in the comments. One other thing I gotta do right now is check on some of the hibernating turtles over here at the Aquascape Pond because we've had such an insane warm up for like the last 10 days. We actually got to 70 degrees just a couple days ago um, and so many of the turtles and tortoises have been coming out. Usually it's not that big of a deal because they're in brumation which is kind of a torpor of sorts as opposed to a full hibernation where they're completely inactive. Um, so naturally reptiles will wake up when the temperature spikes a little bit and then be able to go back down to rest. But it was such an extended warm period that I'm starting to get concerned for a couple of the turtles out here that were just like acting as almost as if it was spring already. So I wanna go through here and I wanna make sure everybody's starting to hunker down again because it's getting cold again. So far I'm liking what I see. I don't see anybody being overly active. They're under the water. Uh, they're mostly just resting. I can see spotted turtles. I can see Blanding's turtles. I can see wood turtles. Uh, all good stuff. Nobody is out walking around or basking. It's so important that they stay under the water when the temperatures start to fall because it's the outside air above the water level that can be dangerous to them. Just like when I've shown you guys when ice forms over the pond or when there's snow, that's an insulation, okay? That's a buffer between what's going on in the safe zone, which is underwater, and above it, which can be treacherous for them. So they naturally hibernate. These species naturally brumate or hibernate historically, so this is what they're supposed to be doing this time of year. Even though species like Blandings and Wood Turtles, for example, are Great Lakes region species, and of course, Northeastern as well, and they can handle frigid winters, they still can get confused with these insane warm-ups that just don't want to quit. I love warm weather. I can't wait for spring to come back, but I don't want it here yet. I want to know that my turtles are safe and absorbing oxygen through the water, through their skin, mouth, and of course, their cloacas. That's how they are able to stay under it, inactive for such prolonged periods without any problems.
Okay, I like what I see. The turtles are sleeping. Uh, seems like all is well. And even if there are other warm-ups throughout the winter, we should be fine as always. Um, but I gotta get back into the barn so I can start observing how our new monitor lizards are settling in. But before I go, guys, please, please subscribe to our channel. And even if you are subscribed already, make sure you click the bell icon next to that tab so that you get notified every single time we post a video. It truly helps us out.